Review questions, uh, I, I like these. It's a, it's a way to get students involved. These are basically test questions we give them in lecture. Uh, so we will do review questions over the material. Typically our reviews are about 12 to 15 slides. And then we tell them, hey, as a benefit of you being here and participating, three of these questions will actually be on your final exam. Now we do not give them the slides that have the questions. Uh, although <laughs> I can see most people answering with one hand and writing the question down with the other, and I'm okay with that. Um, but that's kind of our way of, of giving you a perk for being in class, for attending, and for being engaged. Uh, it also gives us a good, it gives the students a good feel for the styles of questions we ask because we do ask so many silly and opinionated questions. Uh, we do ask some very serious questions and this gives them an idea of how that will work on an exam. Uh, the unannounced quizzes are very similar in structure to the review questions. They are questions directly over material. We actually grade those. So these take the place of the old bubble Scantron system or writing your answers down on paper and turning them in. We actually ask questions and we grade that uh, based off the response reports that we get out of Turning Point. And I'll talk about that a, a little later. Just quickly over the feedback, we've had enormous feedback on the system, um, uh, positive feedback I should say on the system. 94% of our students after the fall 2006 semester said that they thought we used the clickers effectively. Granted, they don't have much experience with anybody else, so they, they think we're doing it right. I don't have much to compare it to, but 84% of the, the folks that responded gave us a positive, they think it helped them in the class. The perception was this kept them engaged. Some of the uh, verbal quotes we got back or some of the uh, written responses on, on the comment sheets we got at the end of the semester were that they loved the clickers. It kept them, we had one person write, uh, using clickers equals keep me, keeping me awake. Uh, so it, it does, I do see fewer people dozing off in the middle of class. Um, they felt like it really kept them engaged. We got a lot of response, positive responses on that Trump game. Um, students really like a gaming environment. So we do a few team review sessions and, you know, um, right now we haven't built much of a reward system in, um, but, you know, you could do everything from extra credit points to, you know, you pan out candy or, or whatnot in terms of your students getting uh, the, the re uh, responses correctly. So the, the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, some of the more constructive things we've heard is that uh, most of the students just want to use the clicker in more classes. Uh, right now, I think uh, the fact that they buy it isn't as big of a deal as much as they want to see it used more frequently. And uh, so that, that's one of the things, uh, again, we're, we're working on with some of the other departments to get it implemented uh, on a larger scale. Any questions about those? Now, um, we actually do track the responses. We don't use them in just a feedback manner. We actually do try and, and give the, uh, take, take these questions that the students are giving and convert them into class participation. Again, just kind of add that weight that this is affecting your grade and kind of get people involved. So uh, we needed a way to convert the Excel spreadsheets, the, uh, the reports that Turning Point produces into, a, into our grading system. Uh, this also required currently in the current model that students have to somehow tell us their device ID number, which is on the back. It's right under the barcode on the back of your clickers. They have to communicate that to us. And then the hurdle we had to get to was to take turning point reports, they export into Excel, and get those into our access database, which is the current model we're using. So a couple of, a couple of hurdles in doing that. Uh, again, I, I wasn't sure how many people were actually going to be using turning point at this point, so I don't know if some of my questions here are going to be terribly relevant. Um, I guess one way I could phrase this is, do, would you plan on basing, uh, uh, on grading the correctness of the responses if you were going to use Turning Point? So, so whether or not you're actually using Turning Point, would you plan on grading the actual responses? That's a sneaky question because we do and don't. <laughs> so, uh, two of you said you don't track the grades and... Uh, one of you yes, one of you no. Okay. We actually do this in a, in a couple of different man manners. Um, a couple of issues we had to address here on the onset, we had to work with clicker ID numbers. Um, we have to deal with user error sometimes. They don't type in the, the number correctly, which happens. Uh, another thing we have is, and, and it's not as much of a problem on the newer ones, I don't think, but the, there's often a leading zero on the serial number. Um, depending on the system you're using, those leading zeros have a tendency to fall off depending on what software you use, you import them into Excel or, or whatnot, those uh, come off. We also see a lot of students using the letter uh, O instead of the number zero. Uh, and that, that creates problems as well. So we had to, to create manners to, to compensate for that. Uh, multiple clicker registrations, either because students lost their clickers, they broke them, 
Um, I actually had one student come up and say, my batteries are dead. Uh, or He asked us what was wrong with this clicker. We said, your batteries are dead. Um, he said, okay, well, I'll just go buy a new clicker. <laughs> Uh, 50 bucks as opposed to like four bucks for new batteries. Apparently when you're driving an Escalade to school, uh, that's not a problem. So he bought a new clicker, okay? But we had to deal with the fact that some students have multiple clickers throughout the semester. Um, quality versus participation points, we grade both on your presence in the classroom and the number of questions you get correct. And I will explain that in a little more detail. It's not a very black and white system but we, we, we take both of those factors into consideration. So we don't want to penalize you if you're not understanding the concepts. We know you're there. We want to give you some credit for that. And then we have to think about misconduct or what we call playing poker. So you get students coming in with five or six clickers, and they look like they've got a full house there, and they're, they're hitting buttons for their buddies who didn't come to class. So we do have people patrolling the classroom kind of looking for that. We actually just last week caught somebody doing it. So now that does happen, unfortunately. This is the access database we built. I'll crawl through uh, a few of these uh, menu systems uh, in just a moment. Uh, basically, we have uh, several buttons you can push. The user interface, I think, is fairly simple. Um, Non-techie people can pick this up and use it. The background uh, devices running this, uh, however, got very complicated. And as you can see, we are on currently version 3.1, if you want to track that kind of thing. So this has been an evolution of a process. What we have for each individual lecture, and this system is the same database is used across both of our courses. We have the, the week number or lecture number. Uh, we have the date, a topic, and then the quality points possible. So if I ask six questions in a lecture, but I'm only grading four of them, then it's, uh, the by default turning point assigns 100 points per question. So there are four or 400 possible points. Um, after our lectures, we save the session. So what happens is, as you use Turning Point, all the, the uh, feedback is, is kept in a file. You can then export that file, and that's what these two things are. I ran two lectures that day, and I pulled in uh, two Excel spreadsheets that have the ID numbers from all the devices and their responses. And actually, as, as it happens, the section number that they participated in. One of the problems we saw, again, we teach five or six, depending on the course, five to six lectures per Friday. We saw with the clickers, for some reason, people thought that if I'm signed up for the 8 o'clock class because I don't want to do that, I can come to 2.30 and still click in. So what we've been, re what we've been uh, kind of forced to do is track people by, by the section they're assigned to. And the reason for that is a security reason. The different instructors don't have access to the other instructor's students. So Frank is the other guy that teaches after me. I can't see his students. So if my students go to his class, I don't know that they ever showed up that day, and they won't get any points. So uh, that's why we've, we've, we've implemented that system to tell the students, you have to come to the class you're signed up for, or you won't get credit. It's more of a uh, technology issue, really, than a policy one. Um, it would be possible for us to do that, but it's, it, would be, it would greatly increase our complexity level. Yeah. Um, our, our, our implementation was a little simpler than what I'm showing you now. Uh, the conditional branching, branching was not used in the first semester. It was literally used to replace handheld quizzes. Um, the database in, in a, was in a much simpler form. I have to remember we teach this stuff, so we're kind of, we find any reason to build a database we can. <laughs> Yes, Frank's the other yeah, lecture, yeah. Built this, so it wasn't you as an individual having to do all of this. In other words, all the classes are being taught the same yep. for this particular course. Absolutely. We take um, K201 actually has a manual that the instructors teach out of. So all of the instructors teach the exact same topics. X201 has a little more flexibility, but the lectures are, we use the same PowerPoints. We, Frank has different stories he tells, so from his own experience than I do. He's an engineer, I'm an old counselor. So I tell a lot of, of stories from implementation points of view. He has a lot of geeky engineer stories he tells. So, but the guts of the material we teach is all identical. And we've all bought into the exact same methodology. Talk to these other departments mm -hmm. to help them get into mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to find that true? Or that they're all going to be individualistic? Um, the, the Courses that we're talking to on the, are, are upper-level courses, so by nature they're much smaller. So typically there's one person running the course, 
and we don't have the issues with five or six different people teaching the same material.